So uh, those of you who are at our kickoff call might be familiar with uh, this kind of intro, but today we're going to do a little bit more of a deep dive into Energy Star Portfolio Manager. Um, as Sarah said, my name is Nisha Egolf. I'm a technical associate at New Buildings Institute, and I helped uh, with the carbon uh, culture over carbon project, uh, collecting all of your data and generating first few reports. I'm so excited to be a part of this as well. Uh, so for those who may not have been a part of the kickoff call, uh, or familiar already, Energy Star Portfolio Manager is a free tool that's online uh, that allows you to track your energy and water consumption, your greenhouse gas emissions, and your costs over time. Um, and so it basically tries to take simple information and give you uh, really kind of powerful performance indicators and help you make decisions about uh, managing your building or buildings. Next slide, please. Uh, so uh, I'm trying to kind of think at a high level what is needed to uh, get started with Portfolio Manager and uh, do that benchmarking through that platform. Trying to kind of break it down into four steps. Uh, the first is to create a free account. Uh, the second is to import your building characteristics data. The third step is providing actual energy consumption data. Um, so the minimum is one consecutive year, but more is definitely better. Uh, and this would also include delivered fuels and on-site generation if you have any uh, solar or wind on-site. Uh, and then if you have a multi-use building type, um, also you'll need to just be able to provide information about the allocation of those different building types. Um, also, if you have like a parking garage that you want to include, um, there's some things like that. Um, that are kind of an additional step, but really the key is those first three steps. Um, and these slides will be shared, and so there's a link to the quick start guide on this slide. Um, and as Sarah mentioned, we're going to have these office hours where we can answer questions as well. Great. So um, I'm going to go through uh, at a high level these steps to get started for everyone today. Um, I have a few slides just to kind of uh, give you a high level and again have something for you all to look at back look back at after this call. Um, but then also I'll do a quick live demo as well. Uh, so step one, creating your free portfolio manager account uh, is super easy, probably the easiest step. You just need your contact information, which hopefully you know, uh, property address, your organization name. And then there is one question that asks about the primary business um, or that you're building or buildings that you're going to be adding. And in this case, um, you want to choose entertainment slash recreation. And then as you start adding individual buildings, you can get more specific and you know select the museum building type. So once you have your account, then uh, you can start adding buildings. So these slides were created from the perspective of um, someone who maybe just has like one or two buildings, not necessarily a huge campus. Uh, so you can see I have a screenshot shot here. Um, Portfolio Manager is really great about really guiding you through the process and giving you all the information that you need. So you can see on this uh, screenshot here, this is taken from uh, the actual Portfolio Manager site, um, you select here your uh, more detailed property type. So this is where you would select museum. Uh, and then you would say uh, a single building or multiple building campus. And you'll notice that if you have more than one building, it has a link for campus guidance. If you're not sure about property types, it has a link for property types. So um, they have a really robust uh, FAQ section. They have a glossary. Um, so don't be intimidated about using this system because they really are trying to make it uh, super easy to follow. Um, for me today, I was making a test property, so you can see that radio button is selected. Uh, but also, you know, if you uh, have a project, a design project, you can even add that to Portfolio Manager. I don't think that that's necessarily what we're here for today, um, but it's good for you all to know that that's an option. Uh, and the way to do this is um, from your main kind of uh, portfolio manager dashboard, you'll see this blue add a property button. It's just the most prominent button on the upper left of your screen. Um, so super easy to get this process started as well. 
So uh, in terms of information that you will need, so trying to think, I think the thing that makes it easiest for you to add buildings in Portfolio Manager is to already have a lot of the information they're going to ask for. Obviously, you can always look at it and go back. Um, but if you're like me, you know, once you're ready to jump in, you want to have everything in front of you. Uh, so you'll need to know the year that your building or buildings were built, the gross floor area. And so uh, this screenshot I have to the right shows things that you should include in that gross floor area and things that you would not want to include. So if your building has balconies or patios, that would not be included in the gross floor area. The reason that they're asking for this is really to help calculate the energy use intensity. So, uh, you know, think about your HVAC system. You're not air conditioning your patio, hopefully. Uh, if it's an enclosed patio, maybe, maybe that would count. But, uh, you know, your driveway or parking would not be included. Um, another question that they'll ask in this section is about occupancy. So that's the percent of the property that is occupied and operational as an average over the year. Um, so I think people can kind of tend to overthink this question, um, but even the portfolio manager uh, tool tip, if you look at this field says, don't overthink it, just use your best guess. Um, this is not something uh, that's going to play a huge factor in a lot of the metrics. Uh, it's really just trying to get a sense for uh, the occupancy. Where you can provide more detail that will be helpful is in the optional information that will follow as a part of this step. Um, where you can talk about, uh, where you can provide information for the weekly operating hours, uh, the number of workers on your main shift, um, which in the case of cultural institutions, maybe it's just one shift. Uh, and then there is also a question about the number of computers. Uh, I don't think that that is required for, for this new uh, cohort, but that is an optional field that you will see. Okay, so once you have your building or buildings added uh, to Portfolio Manager, then you'll need to start adding in your energy information. So the way that Portfolio Manager has it set up is you will define the meters uh, that are used in your building or buildings, and then you will add the consumption information that is tied to each one of those meters. So as you're preparing for this step of the process, uh, you will need the number of energy meters that you have by fuel type as well. So you can see this uh, screenshot to the right. Um, it's again, it's really helpful, kind of like holding your hand and asking you exactly uh, what information you're going to provide. So if you have electric, natural gas, uh, if you have those delivered fuels like propane or fuel oil, you will select all of that here. And it will also ask you how many meters of each one. So if you know that you have two gas meters, you can enter that and it'll kind of like go ahead and set up that construct for you. Um, the other thing that you'll need to know is, uh, which you should be able to find from your energy bills, uh, is the units of energy. So if you have natural gas, you'll need to know if it's delivered in therms or cubic feet, for example. Um, that will matter, and making sure that that is accurate when you input it will definitely change your results. So uh, that's a good thing to make sure you you know for sure. Um, you'll also need to know, uh, or they ask this question, when each meter became active. And really what this is trying to do is um, it's a troubleshooting kind of uh, flag that they've created so that if you input energy data, uh, but you have a meter that you've had for much longer, then it will flag and say, hey, it looks like you have missing data. So for your purposes, if you really want to just know, you know, kind of how you did for the last year, you just want to input a year of data and join us for this project, um, then you should just make sure that the date the meter became active just matches the start date of your energy bills. And then you won't get any of those flags and errors. Um, again, don't take it too seriously. It's really just to, to make sure that uh, you don't have any missing information. Uh, and then make sure that you have your 12 months of bills ready to go so that you can input the actual values of how many firms or how many KWH uh, you actually used. Bishop, we have a quick question. Do you mind going back to step two? Um, it's about oh, yeah. would sure. be occupancy um, of the, the number of visitors per year or the number of staff? Great question. 
yeah, so I think in this case, it's asking about occupancy of the building as a whole. So it's like, how many hours of the year is the building occupied one way or the other? Um, so if you think about a typical day where staff comes in at 8 a.m. and uh, leaves at 7 p.m., but there's a, a lot of um, you know guests in the meantime, I would probably use that 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. window because there's some level of occupancy, and that's when the equipment um, is most likely to be operating. Did that answer the question? Okay, and then I see another question from Robert. What if the building does not have any setbacks? Yeah, so I think that um, for most institutions, um, especially if you don't have any setbacks, you could probably pretty safely put 100% occupancy. I think that um, the other use of that occupancy field is also for tenant spaces. Um, so it's not like, again, it's not perfectly relevant to this building type. So that's why I was saying, don't take it too seriously, just make your best guess. I think that in most cases, your occupancy will probably be somewhere around like 80 to 100 percent. Thanks for flagging that question, Stephanie. It's easy to get on the roll. <laughs> Great. OK, um, yeah, and I guess I should have said that at the start. Definitely feel free to yeah throw questions in the chat as we move along, um, because sometimes it's hard to hold on to those questions for like, 10 more minutes. <laughs> so we'll, we'll definitely answer questions as we go. Um, okay, so we're on step three, adding our energy bills. They have two different ways to do this. Uh, the first is you can do a manual entry. So you can see this screenshot on the right here. I've created my electric meter. Um, there's some basic meter information that's hidden in this screenshot, but I'll share it when I do my screen share. Um, and then I don't have any energy data in there yet. I just went through the process to make my meter that says I have an electric meter. Now it's time for me to input what I've actually used over the last year. So you can, um, by hand, you can type in or use the you know little calendar field here on the start date and end date, what your usage was, uh, your cost, um, this is optional. So you can see that the start date, end date, and usage are black font. That means that it's a required field. The blue fields, the cost, uh, whether or not it's an estimation, the green power, demand, and demand cost are optional. Now, I will say, I think that there is one ex exception to this, which is um, the estimation checkbox. If it is an estimation, you definitely need to check that. You all should not be doing any estimations because we want actual real data in this case. Um, but again, if you were in that scenario where you have a building you're designing or you're forecasting and using some of the other reporting functionality, you might say, I'm going to estimate my consumption for the next year and see where that would put me in terms of cost. Um, so again, not necessarily the use case for this project, but did want to make you all aware that that is an option. Um, so as you can see, this is a little bit timely of a process, even though there's only three fields that you have to fill out. Um, if you're comfortable working with spreadsheets, I definitely recommend uh, option two, which is a bulk entry via spreadsheet. Um, basically, what you can do is you see that uh, in this screenshot, and we'll also go through this in the screen share, uh, there's a link for the spreadsheet that you can use. So it's going to download a spreadsheet to your computer uh, that has these columns. And uh, basically, you'll just fill it in, and then you can just upload it here on the same page. So um, really straightforward, as long as you, like I said, as long as you have the ability to download files from a browser, um, and as long as you have the ability to then upload files, uh, and you have general comfort with Excel, um, you can definitely do that. Also, though, if you only have 12 months of data and you really just want to do it manually, just to make sure uh, you feel more comfortable with that, that's also fine, and just follow option one. Um, and you can see that there's a lot of uh, tool tips uh, to help you with that. So like the green plus sign, add another entry that's uh, over there on the left-hand side. You just click that you know, 11 times, and then you have 12 total rows, and you'll be good to go. Um, if you have a campus and you have a lot of buildings that you need to do at the same time, or a lot of meters, um, there 
is a bulk upload option where you can actually upload multiple meters and multiple buildings at the same time. Um, I'm not recommending that uh, just because of the potential for error, unless you do have a really expansive site um, where it's going to save you a lot of time to do this. Uh, I have a slide with resources and links, so I would suggest following that and then bringing questions to office hours if you're in that scenario. But I assume that most folks on this call are not in that situation, so I'm not going to go through that today. Okay, so then once you have filled in your energy data, you are done and you should see this table at the bottom right that has your uh, EUI, which is your energy use intensity and KBTUs per square foot. Uh, your source energy, your site energy, uh, and an estimate of your greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, if you want, you can also add information about water consumption, waste consumption. Uh, there are some reporting uh, tools that you can use, and also you can set energy targets and do some forecasting stuff, kind of like I alluded to. Again, for this project, really want to focus on just those three easy steps of create your account, create your buildings, and upload your energy data. Um, I will note that this table here at the bottom right and this chart that you're seeing here, this is for a test building that I created uh, with fake data. Um, these will not populate, these will not show up if you have any gaps in your data or if you don't have a full year of data. Um, so as you're thinking about getting set up in Portfolio Manager, you do want to make sure that you have uh, energy data for all of your meters over the same time period. So it's not going to work for you to have gas data from 2019 and electric data from 2022. You really need to make sure you have all of your data for one consecutive year uh, across all of your meter types. Okay, so as promised, I have linked some really helpful resources here. There's a quick start guide that goes through a lot of the stuff that I just covered. They have a great training library. I have a screenshot over on the right hand side here. You can watch more live demos. Uh, they have events, uh, previous events and slides that you can follow. Um, then they also have some really helpful information for campuses. Like I said, I'm not really focusing on that today, but uh, if you are in that situation and you start through this process and you have questions, um, I would say definitely check out these resources uh, and then also bring your questions to a future office hours. And I think that is all of my slides. So I'm going to move into a quick demo in real time so you can see that all this stuff I told you is actually real uh, and answer some questions. Um, Kind of in real time. So I guess it looks like there's not any other questions in the chat. So I will go ahead and share my screen and I will apologize. I will not be looking at you. I will be looking up at my shared screen here. Okay, so you can see here is the NBI dashboard. Uh, this is what it looks like on my uh, home page here. You can see that I have set up uh, three test properties. Um, I have a test campus that I have not filled in any information for yet. Um, and then I have a test historic house and a test museum. Um, so you can see that I have put in some fake data that shows these, uh, especially this test museum is using a lot of energy. Uh, so this is what you will see um, when you first get set up. You won't have any buildings here, obviously. Uh, but you'll just follow this add a property button to get started. Although I did jump the gun a little bit. Uh, I guess the very first thing I should show you is how to create an account. So uh, it's portfolio manager.energystar.gov. Uh, and on the home page, there's the option for create an account. Uh, again, you'll just want to make a username and password. If you are with an organization, you know, just think about what you want your uh, username to be and your kind of details here, uh, if there's going to be other people who might need to uh, use your login credentials, just kind of keep that in mind as you get your account set up. Um, but otherwise, it's a very straightforward, typical online account creation, right? Um, basic information here. Uh, and then this is that field that I mentioned, the primary business service or uh, of your organization. So. Uh, this is where you would want to uh, select entertainment slash recreation just because it's the closest thing that they've got in the drop down right now. Um, if 
your organization is an Energy Star partner. Um, I don't know that that's uh, relevant here, but you can check that. Um, and you can see when I hovered over this blue text, this tooltip came up. So this is what I was talking about. The portfolio manager is really great because it just totally uh, leads you through the process. You're like anything that you might have a question about, they really tried to anticipate uh, and make it you know, not too intimidating. Um, so do you want your account name and username to be searchable? Um, I think that uh, for the purposes of this project, we do want the answer to this to be yes. This does not mean that people automatically get to you know, see any of your business. You have to uh, proactively connect with other people um, for them to be able to see your information. So those of you who uh, participated in Culture Over Carbon, um, you may remember that process of needing to uh, connect with NBI so that we could see your data, um, because until then we can't see anything. Um, confirm you're not a robot. Hopefully everyone can do that. And then create your account. And then that's where you would land um, on your main dashboard page here. So um, I will go ahead and select the add property button just so you guys can see that process. Um, this should look familiar to that screenshot. Uh, this is where you would select um, your more detailed uh, building type. So I think for many of you that will be museum. And in fact, we would uh, like to encourage you to select that because that is uh, kind of the overarching group uh, that we're hoping to get that Energy Star score. If we have enough people to join as museums, um, we can get that Energy Star score um, process started. So uh, then this is where you select one building or more than one building. Um, just for this uh, example, I'm gonna select one. And because I am, uh, doing this for you all. It's a test property, um, but you all would probably select that it's an existing building. So uh, then it's going to ask you uh, some information about your property. Uh, so really good tip here, um, try to make sure that the name that you use is descriptive, uh, especially if you have multiple buildings. Uh, this is going to be important so that you or again, if you're sharing a login with any colleagues, um, you know, know what building you're looking at and uh, upload the correct data. So street address, uh, year built, here's that gross floor area that I was describing previously, occupancy, and you can see um, the occupancy does not affect your Energy Star score. Um, so again, don't take this one too seriously, but just make your best guess. Um, if you are uh, subject to a benchmarking law, um, if you are located in, you know, Boston, for example, and you have already have to report data for benchmarking, um, you can, and you know this ID, you can select that here, um, fill this in. This is totally optional, um, but it, I think it's just a helpful kind of tracking tool. So then you would just hit continue, and uh, I guess maybe I will go ahead and fill in this information uh, really quickly, just so you can see how much it really does guide you through the process. Uh, also, you can see it doesn't check for things like fake street. So you will uh, just want to have a little bit of attention to detail as you're uh, filling this in, uh, because it does have some checks for you. But if you, you know, accidentally input uh, 1870 instead of 1970, it may not catch that for you. So I'm going to say this is a 50,000 square foot building. Um, irrigated area, this is optional, but if you happen to know um, how much of your property is uh, supplied with water, this is something you could fill in, especially if you're interested in tracking your water consumption. Um, you can fill this in, but this is totally optional. So again, don't get too hung up on that one. Uh, if you have a photo, you can also upload a photo, which is nice, especially for those of you with campuses. Sometimes it helps provide that quick visual reference um, when you're looking at, at your profile. Uh, so it gives you the opportunity to review. Um, this is where you would add another type of use if it's a mixed use building. Again, I don't think that that's super relevant for a lot of you, but um, there is the option to do that here. And then you also have the opportunity to add some of those more 
uh, details like weekly operating hours, number of workers on your main shift, or number of computers, which I think we all can ignore for this project. Um, and I do see that there is a question in the chat. So would it be possible to show the setup for properties with more than one building? Sure, yeah. Um, so far, the setup is very similar. And I think I may be able to just go back, in fact. Let's say we've got three buildings here. Everything else is the same. So we're still gonna put um, the basic information uh, about the property as a whole. So I think that you know this would be like your campus name if you have multiple buildings and whatever your you know mailing address is for your campus. Uh, I'll just put it. Portland, because that's where I'm located today. And maybe it doesn't like this because I. Oops. <laughs> well, doesn't like that today. Not sure what that's about. But then you would put your overall um, date that your campus was built your overall um, gross floor area for the entire campus. So that's something that you would have to gather if you have multiple buildings. Uh, and then your occupancy. And then, oops, you should be able to then, ah, that's why it wouldn't let me do the state because I didn't select the country. So you guys are seeing in action some of the uh, the checks that it does help you with. So now I've completed, got a completely fake property here. It's in Canada, but it has a zip code of Portland, Oregon. <laughs> All right, so now we're back to that same page that we were at before. Um, so now I'm just gonna click add a property. So it says, congratulations, you successfully created your property. So now our next step is to add that energy information. And because we created this campus, now we need to enter specific information about your individual buildings. Um, so since we are on this thread for the campuses, I will just click this link um, to show you that uh, you would go through the process to, um, if you have Portfolio Manager already and you wanted to add buildings that you've already added, you could do that here. But for those of you that are starting from scratch, um, you would enter a new building here. So now this is your specific um, building. So before we were putting in our campus name, now we're gonna put in our building name. And in this case, I'm gonna say it's a museum, it's existing. This one is just 30,000 square feet. We'll say that. And then we'll say continue. So now um, it has auto-filled some of the address information, but if you have a separate address for this particular building that you want to record, you can do that. Um, that's not really used for any of the, the metrics and reporting. It's really only for your tracking purposes. So keep in mind that this is a tool for you as well and everyone in your organization. So uh, the information that you provide, think about how useful it's going to be to you know, yourself as you use this tool as well, right? Um, all right, so I'll say it's 95% occupant. Uh, also, just note that um, if you want to include parking areas, there's a checkbox to do that here. All right, so now this screen should look pretty familiar. Um, again, it's just checking in on the building and some of these additional questions. I'm going to add that. And so now I've successfully created that building. So I have a campus that has one building. And so if I go back to my portfolio and my properties, you can see that it has this little arrow because it was a multi-building campus, right? And so you can see building one that I created is nested under the overarching campus. So that's the general process for, for adding a property where you have multiple buildings. Um, so let's go ahead and go to building one um, because we need to add some energy data. So uh, if we go to the energy tab, it says, hey, you don't have any energy meters for this building. Uh, so you need to enter the information about your meters first. So this should look familiar. 
Um, I'm going to say that this building has one electric meter, uh, no on-site solar, it's just electric that we're purchasing from the grid. And then I'm going to say it has one natural gas meter as well. Uh, if it had multiple natural gas meters, you would just update that number and you would just have to go through this process I'm about to show an additional time. Uh, all right, so we're going to get started here. This is where you need to input the uh, the units. So natural gas, I'm going to say I have therms. For electric, I'm going to say I have kilowatt hours. And then this is where you need to input that date that the meter became active. So again, this is the date where your first energy bill starts. So it's really helpful to have your energy bills on hand before you do this step. Uh, so you don't have to go back and update this. Um, but also, if you need to update this later, you totally can. It's super easy. Um, that's the nice thing about Portfolio Manager. Everything is uh, at your fingertips and easy to update anytime you need to. Um, you can also see it asks a few additional questions here. Um, is this meter still in use? Um, so this answer is going to be yes. Um, if you have a building where you really wanted to go back far and look at your energy consumption over 10 years, um, then you could add meters that are no longer active, but you know maybe they were active five years ago. Um, so that's why they have that there. But if you do that, then you do need to add the date that it became inactive, again, for that error checking, um, just to make sure that you have the consistency of the data. Um, if it's fuel oil or propane, you will want to enter it as delivery, which means you have a delivery date instead of a range of dates that you used. So like if you have an electricity bill, it's saying, you know, starting October 1st through November 2nd, here's the KWH that you used. But if it's fuel oil, a lot of times you'll just get a delivery of a certain number of gallons on a certain date, right? You don't necessarily have that date range uh, tracking. So that's what this question here is in regards to. Um, you can also add a custom name to your uh, meters. Right now, these are just going to show up as natural gas meter, electric grid meter. <laughs> so also, if you have a complex building where you have four different electric meters, um, you will probably want to create your custom meter names, uh, ID names, so that you can more easily see what you're actually looking at, because electric meter one, electric meter two, electric meter three, is not very helpful, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and create these meters. And uh, we can see that we have uh, natural gas is what it kind of defaulted to as the first one we can add to. So this one is super simple because all you have to do is add a start date and end date, your usage in therms, and then this optional cost, if you wanted to track your energy costs um, and you already have your bills, I definitely recommend you just go ahead and put this number in because it's just one more piece of data that you can easily track in this one system. Um, but you know, if you have some sort of billing management system where you have your firm's data, but not your cost data, and it's gonna be a real pain, don't worry about it. Again, it's thinking about how you wanna use the tool in the way that's gonna be most useful for your organization. So this is where I was saying that you, know, you can go through and you can select your start date and end date, it's really nice that it auto fills a one month period for you. You could see that I selected December 1st, and so then it went to January 1st. Uh, and then you would just manually input how many therms. You would click add another entry. And it's also smart, so it'll auto fill, you can see the next month. So it's not too time intensive. Again, like if you're not comfortable with Excel or you don't have the ability to download files because of some sort of you know firewall. Um, it's not going to take you too terribly long to do this um, because you can just add entries this way. However, if you are interested in uh, using the spreadsheet option, especially if you have more than one year of data and you're like, yeah, I totally want to see how I've been doing over the last three years, um, then I definitely recommend downloading the spreadsheet. And so this is going to look really familiar. It is basically the spreadsheet version of this web page. Uh, so you can see you have your start date, your end date, uh, your usage, and then if you are filling out the spreadsheet, the estimation checkbox that we saw on the website, it is a required field in the spreadsheet, but you would just select no. It's not an estimation. I'm putting in real data here. So uh, once you have completed this spreadsheet, 
then you would select a file uh, and you can see it's right here. Uh, let's see if I have one that I have already done for one of my other buildings that will work. So I just selected the file here. You can see that it uh, recognized the file. I'm gonna click upload and it says, hey, whoa, you have an issue with the dates here. And that's probably because I tried to upload a file for a completely different building. Um, but you can see this is the data that I had uh, for the other building. So yeah, the, the data that I had already was starting in April 2021, ending in April 22. And then I have these two random entries here starting in December 22. Um, so Portfolio Manager is kind of smart that way where it will catch things like that. Um, oh, I looks like I lost my crowd here for a second. There we go. Uh, but uh, it will still work. So it's you can see it's flagged red, but uh, you can still click continue. And oh, it's because this is blank. Okay, so now uh, we need to, but it does need to know of these two meters that we added, um, do you want all of these included in your metrics? And I think that the answer is going to be yes uh, for most of you. Again, it would only be if you had something that you were like trying to track separately that this would not apply. Um, but basically they just want to confirm, do these meters account for the total energy consumption of the building? Uh, that answer needs to be yes for it to be able to uh, calculate your energy use intensity. So um, you can see that we now have these two meters here. We have that uh, incredibly fake data that I just added to the natural gas, and uh, it shows you the most recent build date and if it's still in use. This chart, um, you saw an excerpt of that on the slides. Um, this is not going to populate because I've only put in natural gas data and I haven't put in really accurate natural gas data, right? Um, so let's go ahead and go to back to my portfolio and I'll just show you one of the uh, properties that I do have data for that I set up before this call. Um, so you can see this is another fake test museum that I created. Uh, this one, I said it has chilled water, it has electric grid, it also has on-site solar and natural gas. Um, it's all in use. Here's our recent build dates. And so then um, you have this nice chart here that shows your consumption. Um, obviously this is test data, so not necessarily realistic. Uh, and if you go to the summary here, you can see that you have your summary of metrics for your source UI, your site UI, and your uh, greenhouse gas emissions intensity. If you were to fill in your energy cost, like um, as you were seeing in that, what I was showing and then in the spreadsheet, you can also fill it in that way. Um, these would be populated. So again, it's kind of like, that's where you can go the extra mile to get that information out of the tool if it's of value to you. Uh, the Energy Star score is gonna be not available. We've talked about that. That's part of the goals of this project. The more people, that get signed up and add properties in here, the more likely we are going to be able to try to get this um, streamlined score, this benchmarking uh, option available for this cohort. Um, so basically uh, going back to the energy meters, that process I went through for the natural gas, um, you could go through that for all of your different meters. Um, let's say that something changes about your meter. You wanna change the name um, or it becomes inactive. Uh, you can see that I went to the, let me just do that one more time. Don't want to rush. So we go to the energy tab. You go down to your table with all of your meters. I'm going to look at my solar meter. And then there's this basic meter information at the top of the page, which all you have to do is click to expand. So um, this is all of the information. This is where you can update the name. Uh, if you were like, oh my gosh, I totally selected KWH when I meant to select KBTU, <laughs> you can fix that here. Um, and then this is also where if you put the incorrect date that the meter became active, like let's say you think you have energy bills in, through 2020, but you actually only have through 2021, 
um, this is where you can update that date so that it aligns with your energy data. Um, so super simple, you can save any changes. And then down below, you can see all of your monthly entries. So uh, this one, because it's solar, on-site solar, the fields are a little bit different. Uh, you have the energy that you use on-site, and then you also have the energy that is exported off-site if you have any exported. So you do need to track that. Um, and then again, you can input your total cost, whether or not it's an estimation. For solar, they also want to know about your renewable energy credits, um, if they are owned or sold. So um, the last thing that I wanted to just mention really quickly, because I know we're out of time and I'm not seeing any questions, so that's why I'm kind of just continuing. Uh, I'm not going to save my changes here. Uh, you can see that uh, if you go to the water tab, this is where you can add water meters if you want to track your water consumption. And then also if you want to track your waste, uh, like if you do composting, um, if you have mixed recycling and you really want to be able to report how many pounds of recycling you're, you're getting rid of every year, um, there is an option for you to do that here. Again, uh, it's up to you to assess if that's of value to you. Um, for this project, it's really just as simple as what I went through today. Add a property, add the meters, fill in the data, and that's it. So it looks like we have five minutes left. Uh, are there any questions that people have not put in the chat? Or Sarah and Stephanie, do you have anything that you want to add? I know that we have a couple wrap-up slides, so I want to make sure we, we leave time for that. I so appreciate that presentation. Um, it's a very powerful tool, but it has great basics for all of us. So I hope that everyone else finds it useful as well. I'm not seeing any more questions so i'm just going to share my um, screen for a few of the last slides so what do you guys do next um if you haven't already find out who has the energy bills in your institution how you should go about collecting them and you might create a protocol that is as simple as putting a calendar reminder on the third Monday of the month that says reach out to get those energy bills, if you don't own them, to get those energy bills. And the fr third Friday of the month, the end of that week, to actually enter them into Energy Star Portfolio Manager. That's all you might need in order to create a protocol to getting this work done. And then we hope that you'll join us maybe to do that data entry. We've got these again are the office hours that we'll be providing. And of course, you can access this um, information online at the Environment and Culture Partners website. But maybe you want to put into your protocol is joining the office hours in order to log that data. And while you're doing it, you'll have access to talent like Misha in order to answer any questions. Maybe the first day that you enter all of that building information will be January 18th during office hours. And you can use that as the way to get started logging all of the 2022 information. That's all that I have. So I'd like to thank everyone for coming and say that we'll lurk for the last four minutes in case anyone has more questions or resources or stories to share about their experience. Thanks all. <laughs>